Hello, I'd just like you to um, have a look at my trying Stevenson rocket. Uh, as you can see, it looks pretty much like a standard trying Stevenson rocket. Uh, the difference with this one is that it actually has a brand new motor in it, and it's not the trying X500 motor that's normally fitted to these locomotives. It's actually a Marbushi five pole uh, motor, which I managed to source um, from eBay. Um, the Trying X500 motors are quite difficult to get hold of now, and if you can get hold of one, they're quite expensive to buy. So I wondered if there might be um, an alternative motor that could be put into this particular locomotive. Um, after a lot of searching, I managed to find this Marbucci motor, uh, which has, um, which is very similar in size to the trying motor. Um, the only thing I've had to do to it is to, um, it actually has uh, a shaft at both ends of it, so I've actually had to grind off um, the shaft at the end that I didn't want. Um, the other thing is that the worm gear on the trying motor has um, a hole diameter that's just slightly larger than the one and a half meters millimeters of the Marbushi motor. So when you put it on, it slides on. It should be um, quite a tight fit, but it wasn't. So what I found was that if I super glued the uh, worm gear onto the shaft it's actually hurt, um, held quite firmly and it doesn't move and as you can see it, the train moves backwards and forwards so hopefully the um, worm gear will stay in place um, I'd just like to take the engine apart and then you can see the motor inside uh, and you can see it's actually quite similar in size to the trying motor. So I'll just take hold of the locomotive. Uh, it's actually quite easy to take apart. Uh, if I just take the coal truck off the back, the tender, and I'll just put that to one side. Um, the thing you have to do with the, um, first of all, is to take out the screws that hold the connecting rods in place. So we just take those out. So there's one on that side. Put that carefully aside because they're not easy to get hold of if you lose it. And take the other one from the other side. So you be very careful with these screws. Um, they do occasionally appear on eBay, uh, but they're quite expensive to buy just for a, a couple of small screws. Now once you've done that, it's quite an easy task to take the body off. Um, so all you do, first of all, is to expand, just pull apart the um, sprung wire that locates either side of the um, chimney stack that just levers back and then comes off quite simply like that um, the other thing is the chimney just simply pulls off and then you'll find that the wire releases from the chimney once you've done that you can actually pull the um, body straight off there's no screws holding it on, it just comes off like that. And now, and there's the Marbushi motor there. Um, these locomotives either came with a smoke unit or they came with a big resistor that sits inside the chimney stack. I've actually, this one came with a resistor, I've removed the resistor. They also come with an interference suppressor that goes between the two pickups there where the red wires are. I've also take, I've taken that off as well um, simply to try and improve running because 
these are now over 50 years old these locomotives so it's quite possible the resistor and the suppressor may be causing problems anyway feeding the motor um, as you can see there you've got the worm gear which to say is actually super glued in place uh, because the whole diameter, diameter is slightly bigger than is needed for the Marbushi motor but having said that it's a fairly snug fit but the super glue should help to keep it in place and if you look at the motor you can actually see it is a five pole motor not a three pole motor uh, which is the case with the original trying motor um, the other thing I've done is on the trying motor if you see this white plastic part here this is the plate that goes on to the front of the trying motor and I've reused it on the Marbushi motor the reason being that that um, ensures that um, the uh, worm gear will be in the correct place when you fit the Marbushi motor uh, that's only that's just simply super glued onto the front of the Marbushi motor and then the worm gear was put on and super glued in place as well being careful not to get any super glue where the white plastic plate is um, again I've run a wire directly from the negative terminal on the chassis this is a, plit, a split chassis so um, one side feeds that side of the chassis and this wire feeds that side of the chassis the rear pony wheels at the back are also also supply um, power to the motor so these also act as, act as pickups as well so it's um, quite vital that these wheels are kept clean just as much as the driving wheels on the front uh, and on the bottom there you can see the uh, shiny magnet on the bottom which provides magnesium for the uh, wheels this helps the wheels to um, grip onto the track because obviously you've only got two driving wheels so I've also tried to re-magnetize that motor the problem with the old trying motor was basically the magnet um, I did clean the motor up, tried to get it running, which I did. I got it running um, perfectly well outside of the motor, but it just wasn't enough power to drive the wheels. Uh, I would guess that's probably down to the motor, uh, the magnet inside the motor. I did try to re-magnetise the motor and got it running a lot better. Originally it didn't run at all, um, but basically I just couldn't get it running well enough to drive the motor the locomotive along the track so hence the search for an alternative motor there it is a uh, Marbushi motor installed in a trying Stevenson's rocket um, if you do try to do this conversion obviously it's at your own risk uh, it took me some time to work out how to actually install the motor in um, <coughs> the plate holds the motor at the front because that uh, goes into a small there's a projection on the bottom of the um, plastic plate and that goes into the chassis at the back um, I couldn't really think of a very good way of uh, locating the motor on the back so basically it's just held in with super glue on the back so if necessary I could break the um, super glue um, at the back and just take the motor out if necessary but um, if I had uh, more time and I may do in the future I may actually make up a proper metal plate to hold the motor in place but it seems to hold it quite securely and the locomotive runs pretty well so I'm happy with it at the moment anyway thanks for looking and um, I hope your Stevenson rocket runs as well as this one does now thanks a lot bye bye